Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterell here with the BFL featherweight champion Maxime Susi, who will be fighting Radley Da Silva to defend his title at BFL 79 this weekend in Vancouver. Maxime, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And you? I also great. I'm I'm great every time I get to speak with a fighter preparing for in a fight camp and getting ready to fight. It's uh it's it's a dream thing for me. So thank you for asking. So yeah, just, oh no. I, I feel like I just saw you. I was watching the Samurai MMA 9 uh, live stream and I saw that you walked in the cage and with your BFL belt and you go to talk to the crowd. How, do you consider yeah. yourself to be a, any sort of celebrity in, in your area where you live? No, far to be. Far to be. Uh, the thing is, uh, I have a very good relationship with the Samurai and they, they want the best for the, 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 the Quebec fighters. So even if I'm fighting outside of uh, Samurai, they want to they want to promote the fighter and just they, they want to give us a platform where people can can see us and learn about us. So it's amazing that BFL and Samurai works together and to to make sure that the, they they are making the best decision not only for them but for the fighters and for the sport overall in Canada, which is which is amazing. I'm I'm proud to be part of uh, of that. You should. They're they're both fantastic organizations, and I feel like you you almost read my mind because I was going to bring up this exact topic at some point in this talk. Uh, BFL and Samurai seem to be going hand in hand. Uh, uh, Dan Kai just got a he's a B, another BFL fighter. He just got to fight on Samurai yep. the other night. You fight back and forth. Yep. You fought in Samurai and BFL, and uh, yep. I saw a social media post a while back when UFC two ninety seven was in Toronto. Who was sitting beside each other in the stands? BFL owner Jay yes. Shani and Samurai owner Daniel Lafon. They were so they must be friends. So, as a fan, exactly. uh, I really enjoy seeing that camaraderie and people, like you said, working together for the sport and not just themselves. Exactly, exactly. And also, the thing is, uh, Quebec fighters don't want to fight each other most of the time. We mm. we we don't we don't like that. And we, there's a lot of talent in in Montreal. Uh, just look at the who are the best 45 er Alex Morgan, Fred Zbo, me, and we won't ever fight each other. We train mm-hmm. together every day. So now it, it, it's kind of a problem for a promoter to to get these fighters to to, to fight each other. For so for us, it's beneficial though. We we can go fight elsewhere. Let let's say uh, BFL and the same thing. BFL can bring fighters for us Quebecers and stuff like that. So. It's 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 perfect. So guys can fight east and west, and there's there's no problem in between because it's not the same marketing, it's not the same customers that are gonna go to the show, so they are not interfering with each other. So it's perfect. It's amazing. And for the fighters, it's give us a, a chance to travel, uh, to like to have good experience, uh, different kind of. Just, it's just nice. It's just nice, and I'm very glad they are doing it. It's good for the promotions. It's good for the fighters. It's good for everything. I, I agree 100%. And I feel the same way about when I see two Canadians fighting each other in the UFC or Bellator or something. For example, when Mike Malott and Johan Lainez fought, I, when I saw that matchup, I was like, why they do that? I don't want to see that. I, I, you know, I want to see yeah, the Canadians that. be independent and do well. Exactly, exactly. This is exactly the uh, mindset that we have. Why should we be killing each other here when we can go elsewhere and like fight the guys from the, the other province, uh, the Ontarian and whatever, uh, or go to the USA and fight these guys? I'd much rather go there than fight one of my one of my people. It doesn't make sense for me. You just showed me before we started the interview your huge water bottle. You say you drink four of those a day. You're clearly water loading for your weight cut. Um, so you've got a nutritionist, you've got everything. Tell me about your team and, and the people that support you getting ready for a fight. Yeah, uh, I have a huge team. I, as you know, I train at the TriStar Gym in Montreal, so I have so, so much good uh, training partner. Uh, obviously, the man, uh, Firaz Ahabi, the, the general that is behind all, all my training camp. Uh, so I'm very I'm very lucky to have this man uh, every day just looking at my things and giving me advice and tips and stuff like that. So it's it's amazing. I'm very fortunate. Um, same thing for my striking. I, I worked for a few years now with uh, Livy Labri, which is in my mind one of the best striking coach you, you can have. Uh, he, he took a good example is Olivier Aubin Mercier. He took him uh, as a grappler and 
bring him as a very, very, very decent striker. He was knocking people out at the end, but it took him from scratch and build build him. So very, very good. And now I'm working also with uh, my nutritionist, uh, Luigi Meli, LTC Nutrition. Look at it, guys. Uh, he's amazing. He's, uh, he was working also with uh, Eamon Zahabi, uh, Jonathan Dibella, the 1FC world champion. Uh, Johan Lenes is working with a, a lot of good guys. Uh, he, people don't know him yet. He's just starting, but fuck, he's good. He's really good. He brings me like knowledge that I have no idea before. And he's just so passionate. He's taking care of the guys so much. Uh, he's just... He's just so committed to the task of making us uh, not just make weight, but make it the safest way as possible. As we saw this week, uh, um, Sunrise and FLA, both main events got canceled because they had a mm -hmm. uh, health issue, um, mm -hmm. kidney failures uh, due to the weight cut. So having Luigi with me um, allows me to do that 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 sport, the sport I love, which is a crazy sport, I'm just saying, it's a very dangerous sport, but I'm a, I'm a, it gives me the chance to do it in the safest environment as possible. So it's amazing. You've got a five in one record, and so you've got some experience, but basically you're still yeah. like a, a, new, a newish fighter. So when I hear fighters, you know, talk about having like a nutritionist on their team or a strength and conditioning, all that kind of stuff. It's usually not till later on in their career when they're getting a little bit more serious and maybe they're being courted by the mm -hmm. UFC or they're going to Bellator or something like mm -hmm. that. So with six fights, that's not something I typically hear a six fight yep. fighter talk about. I'd imagine that this is something you take very seriously then and this is a, a long term goal for you. What are your plans for yes. this martial arts? Uh, but first, I always worked with an nutritionist uh, since my first fight. Uh, because I always take it seriously. Like cutting weight is not something that you do like, ah, it's going to be easy. I'm just going to be low, low carbs, low calories, and everything going to be fine. No, it's not going to be fine. You're going to crash. You're going to crash. And because the training camp is not just only about losing weight. It's like I need to perform in the training camp mm -hmm. and also lose weight. It's not like, okay, I'm going to starve myself to make weight. Yeah, right. But you just lost eight weeks uh doing nothing because you couldn't train properly and you couldn't get any better and you just make sure that you could do weight so it's like you're not you're it's not any beneficial so yeah and i like to be surrounded with the very like talented people serviceable ser people that they, they can teach me a lot so that's why I, I bring all the best and that's why i'm successful and that's also where i'm going like in my career i wanted to be like in, in the game in the, as I said, it's a very dangerous sport. So you want to make it everything as healthy as possible. So you want the best training, training partner. You want the best coaches. You want the best team around you. Um, that's the best thing for me to to get to do it healthy. So to reduce the risk, I'm not taking anything like uh, lightly. I want the best. I want everybody to be like perfect around me. So uh, the best. My team is the best I will perform. I'm going to get better from, from that side. So when you talk about everybody around you, you want them to be perfect. Does that include your opponent, Radley De Silva at PFL? Or do you want him to come in having a, like a bad preparation? Would you rather have him perform really poorly? Or would you rather have him have everything work out perfectly coming into the fight so that when you beat him, you know you, you've beat the best fighter? And you just said it, when I'm going to beat him. You just said the word. Because I will. What? And, and and the thing is, I, I I'm not the kind of guy that try to, to to get my way to the UFC by like taking the easy path. I want to fight the best fighters, and when I say I want to fight the best fighter, I want to f fight the best fighter in their best condition. I don't want like a, a guy that got sick two uh, two days before. And I I want a tough fight. I'm there for the tough fight. I need challenges. This is what I'm I'm, I'm looking for. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing that sport. Uh, so yeah, I, I want to fight the best Radley as Silva there ever been. What do you know about Radley De Silva? Uh, not much and a lot in the same time. So, but co there's a lot of contradiction what of what I can heard. But I so I don't really care about what people say. 
But basically, uh, he's very well-rounded, very explosive, very, uh, very talented, highly talented guy. Um, but uh, I, I, in fact, there's no but. He's just very talented, very skilled, very talented. He's going to be very entertaining. Um, just going to be a very cool fight. It's going to be such a cool fight. Um, I, I felt like strikers, grappler, wrestler, like very specific guy. And in he's not. He's not like super good in anything, but he's very good in everything. Mm -hmm. So he's truly a real mixed martial artist. So uh, as I am, so it's going to be perfect to have like two real mixed martial artists. Who's the best one? Not like who's the best grappler? Who's the best? Uh, uh, like my my previous fight against Wallet, my game wasn't to go like jujitsu with him. It was mostly to do to do anti jujitsu. So uh, to not engage, but with him, I'm. I'm very gladly to to go in play, engage with him on, on the ground and the wrestling exchange and stuff like that. So it's gonna be who's the best, not who's the best to stop the the other one. Or it, so it's gonna be a, a a crazy flow. So I know we both gonna bring a crazy pace into that fight. So it's gonna be insane. I'm so excited for this fight. I know he's tough. I know he's good. I know he's durable. I need that. I need that. I'm looking for a very tough, ugly, painful fight. So that's that's amazing. That's, I'm very happy. I'm very happy for the fight. You can see I'm like the way I, I'm just I'm just so pumped. <laughs> You're very enthusiastic. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I was speaking. I was speaking with Charles Jourdain a while back, and we were talking about his fight against Cron Gracie. And uh, Charles yeah. was very very dissatisfied with his performance. Uh, no, I, I put that wrong. He wasn't dissatisfied with his performance, but the game plan going in, knowing that Cron's jujitsu, his ground game, is next level. It's it's the yeah. ultimate. So the game yep. plan was to not engage. And Fabio Hollanda told me that too. They said not to go on the ground with Kron. So that kind of made uh, Charles dissatisfied because he wasn't allowed to show everything he had. So yep. when, it, you talk, when you're talking to game planning, in, in, in basic terms, game planning can mean that say if your opponent is an excellent striker, you want to take him to the ground. Yep. If your opponent is an excellent grappler, you want to keep it on the fight. Yep. When you have an opponent, yep. like you just mentioned, Radley De Silva, he's well-rounded, he's good everywhere. How do you game plan an opponent who can do everything? I, I don't game plan as much about him. I, plan, I game plan about me. What, were my, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And patch this all and use my skills to, to, to take advantage in the, in the fight. Uh, I truly believe I have a very good fight IQ. I understand the fight. I've been there for years. I have tremendous experience. People may not know, but I have all, over 100 fights uh, in the Kyukushin uh, karate. So I know how to handle pressure, how to read a guy. Um, so that, that that's pretty much it. I, I, I'm very confident in my in my ability to to solve the puzzle. I know he's going to be very tricky uh, as a as I am also, so it's going to be very cool. Um, but if if I feel I, I need to go on the ground, I'm going to go to the ground. If I need to stay standing or whatever, we can do it all. So it's it's very, very entertaining for me because I'm just going to go there and just let everything go. There is no, okay, I cannot go there. I cannot do, okay, I have to do. No, I have to be aware of a few things, obviously. But there is nothing I'm like, okay, I cannot afford it. Nah, not gonna happen. Uh, it's just let's go with the flow, have fun, and just it's gonna be such a fun fight. Just just a fun fight. Well, based on what you just said, I, I think I know the answer to my next question already, but you might prove me wrong. When you visualize, or say if you had a crystal ball and you look in the future and you see this fight at BFL against Radley, mm -hmm. what what would a perfect fight look like to you? And by that I mean like, would you love to win a fight? by knockout in the first five seconds, maybe like a running across a cage flying knee, or would you prefer to have the yeah. whole fight and have a chance to, to have the ups and downs and get that cage time and win in maybe the last 10 seconds of the fight? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I want to fight as long as I can. Uh, it's cool to have, like, the perfect scenario for me is a 24 minute 55 seconds, and no scratch. That's the perfect scenario. Going there, doing a long fight, having a lot of experience, uh, scrambles, uh, good and bad moments. Uh, this is what I'm looking forward for this fight, uh, and finish him at the end. That's that. That's for me would be the perfect scenario to get the finish and long, long and having experience. Uh, I never did the 25 minute, so I, I know I can do it. But 
it would be a nice experience to, to get it, to have this 25 minutes uh, into the bank. I, I know I'm going to DFC. It's only a matter of time. So for me, uh, the idea is to bank as much time I can in the cage. Um, because once I'm going to get there, and I will, I don't want to be there and like start with a losing streak because I, 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 I lack of experience or whatever. I want to go there when I when the the, 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 the local circuit is, is, is clean. I'm going to clean it. Then after that, I, I'm going to go. Not before that. Uh, that's very important for me. I may get the opportunity soon, but I need to be ready for what's coming. So for me, this is what I'm I'm thinking on the long term. I don't want to get there and get smashed in the, for the first two fights or whatever. So I need experience a lot more than what I have right now. So I'm thinking like long term development and what I think I, I need. Because you, you mm-hmm. maybe the most skilled fighter there is, once you get on the other side, there's you're fucked. You may good yeah. on the local team, but when you go on the other side, you're fucked. It, the, the fun is the fun is gone now. It's it's go time. So uh, yeah, so that's how I see it, and uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm focusing on skills development over over like the the fame or whatever. I want to be the best martial artist that I can be. So for me to be the best is to have experience and get used to the to the cage. Well, that's a great attitude to have. I mean, uh, there's all sorts of parables and people say things about enjoy the, the, the journey and not the destination because, you know, you, you, you have to enjoy what you're doing at the time what's happening. So I think that's a great attitude. Exactly, exactly. And as I said, it's nice to go to UFC, but if, if unfortunately, you're, you're not there to stay, it's not just that you lose. Losing is part of the game and that, that's fine. We have up and downs. These guys are savages. You may get hurt bad. You put your health on the line. So you don't want to go there and just just because you want to take picture and have a nice story to tell and like just to to have the attention of the media or whatever. If you do that for that, you're at the wrong place. You're going to get hurt. Yep. So that that's how I see it. I just want to get better. As a martial artist, it's a it's a long journey, but I want to make it as safe as I can. And for me, the the safest way to do it is to to overperform and get experience, get skilled before getting there. Is there anything you'd like to share about yourself that I I haven't asked? Uh, no, I'm, that's but yeah. There, there's some some things that uh, that people may not know about me is like. Did they know I'm a fighter and stuff I, I do and stuff like that, the, the way I fight? But what most people don't know is uh, I have a totally different fight uh, life outside of the cage. Uh, I'm working full time in finances uh, industries, so I'm I'm a I'm a finance guy, so which is kind of uh, special for like what what the kind of sport I'm doing. So yeah, I work in finances. I'm just really, I, I'm finishing university right now. Uh, so uh, the, the old time I was fighting in BFL, most of the time I was like, hey, I have an exam. I was uh, at the end of my, um, my, my, my my exam period. So I was like, I have an exam. I'm flying to Vancouver. I'm coming back, finishing my exams. Every time, every time it was like that. So I was in the plane or uh, uh, at the hotel and like the day of the fight, I was reading my notes and studying and my coaches were like, fuck, this guy is insane. I'm in the plane and studying, doing homework and like, this guy is not. So yeah, that that's the other part of my life that most people don't know about. And I, I, I feel it, it's very funny because I can do both. I'm very cerebral and I can go in a cage and fight pretty much anybody. So cool. What are you studying in school? Uh, I, I did study uh, finances, uh, but now I'm uh, getting my uh, my license uh, for um, financial planner. So wow. everything linked to investment, and health, uh, wealth management, and stuff like that. So. Wow, that's really great to hear. It's nice that you have a, a backup plan, and you know not only a backup plan, but that's something that can work in oh, conjunction with your, fight, because, with your fight career. Because- Exactly, exactly. I'm I'm gonna fight a few years. Then after that, what I'm gonna do? Work at Walmart? Not the idea. So yeah. uh, and 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 finances is always good for me because as as you you go into your 
you, your MMA career, you, you may make some good money, but if you don't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. you're fucked. If you're not smart enough, there's nothing left at the end. So now you have to go and fight burn a call because you, you burn all your money. So mm -hmm. that's not what I'm planning on. So uh, I'm smart with the decision I'm making. So yeah, that's the idea. So, and when I went back to school, um, I went back when I, uh, I hurt my knee. I have a knee surgery. In, I mean, everything happened at the same time. I had a knee surgery. I had the, the COVID happen. Everything happened. So I went back to university, got my, uh, my, my degree, uh, in university in the same time that was COVID and everything. So I'm like, now I, I, I have my, uh, the school is done. I have everything. I have my diploma, and now I'm good to good to fight, good to have fun. Uh, cool. How old are you right now? At uh, 29. Wow. Well, Maxime, it, it sounds like you've got a really good head on your shoulders and a bright future, and I'm really happy that I get to be on the receiving end of part of your future in in your fight career and getting to watch you fight. So I'll be watching for sure this, uh, I think it's Friday night at BFL 79 Vancouver. Is there anything finally you want to say before we go? Thursday night. Thir um, Thursday, uh, February 8 on the UFC Fight Pass. Yeah, thank you for correcting me. I, I wouldn't have missed it anyway, but maybe somebody would have. So thank you for correcting me. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, 10.30 uh, Easter time, guys. Don't miss it. Before we go, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Yeah, all my sponsors. Uh, there's so so much, guys. Uh, that you guys are so generous with me. Um, I'm going to say it in French because most of them are French, but the uh, Gouttière, the Pro de la Gouttière, uh, climatisation BSL, uh, uh, PGR, group PGR. Honnêtement, les gars, vous m'aidez tellement, c'est génial. Um, Slice Transport, uh, Lyonnais, uh, uh, Yannick Malte, photographe, qui m'aide vraiment beaucoup aussi. On a fait des photoshoots photo shoot, uh, hier. Ouais, uh, genre, exact. Uh, J'en oublie vite comme ça. Uh, Planète Nutrition aussi qui me fournit uh, en supplément. So, thanks guys. Merci beaucoup. So, all of you guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you're always there for me and they, they give me so much. So, uh, I, I cannot be happier to have them around me and just pushing me. And I won't lie, they, they help me financially, but also like mentally because when it's tough, they're there and, and I know even if I lose, they're going to be there and they're going to stick around and they're just good people, good they just want to help uh, people from the, the their community. Community, so it just just nice to have that kind of people around me. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad it's all working out for you, Maxime. Uh, thank you very much for speaking with us. I appreciate you taking the time and your in your weight cut, getting ready to head over to Vancouver, where you'll be fighting mm -hmm. Radley da Silva in the main event, defending your featherweight title at Battlefield Fight League number seventy nine. Thanks, Maxime. Thanks. Thank you so much.